The Durham trial could soon incriminate the FBI and Robert Mueller. Both the former head of the FBI, James Comey, and Robert Mueller were exposed as having lied. And this is pretty serious because depending on, depending on how you frame the nature of the Trump-Russia investigations, this could be anything from them just lying on record to them knowingly colluding. Remember where I started with this whole thing, back when Durham was first coming out with this. Knowingly colluding in an attempt to remove a sitting president from office after having used the same scandal to interfere in an American election. What they did could constitute conspiracy. Conspiracy which would result in an attempted coup, depending on how you frame it. And why do I say that? Remember when Durham first began, you know, revealing some of his policies, when he, when he made his first indictments. If you remember my analysis at that time, I'll restate some of it. There was something very peculiar about John Durham's first indictments, which is this. John Durham laid out much more evidence than he needed to in order to make his initial indictment. Uh, John Durham included in the document the the structure, the skeleton structure of what you could call criminal conspiracy. Criminal conspiracy to interfere with an election through using the Trump Russia Gate scandal, and then to attempt to undermine and even attempt to remove a sitting president from office using the same scandal. The new evidence that's coming out demonstrates one of the key questions that I had at that time, which is the challenge with, with creating a conspiracy charge. And I don't, I don't mean like aliens conspiracy. I mean criminal conspiracy. In other words, people colluding with each other to commit a crime. Conspiracy. Actual conspiracy. You need to prove something very difficult in order to make a conspiracy charge, which is you need to demonstrate collusion among people and you need to demonstrate intent. That intent is now coming out, and that collusion is also now coming out. And if you were to ask me some of the most important parts we saw with this latest trial John Durham is just now wrapping up, is it demonstrated both a knowledge and lying, and also that these individuals were alerted of what was taking place, meaning they knew it happened, meaning they knowingly lied. And meaning as well that they were very much aware of what was really happening and of the truth which they were going against and using politically. Epic Times had this story, just to start on this because I want to unravel all this. They said FBI paid Steele dossier source $220,000 for three years of informant work. That big source who was providing them with information on this was actually an FBI was was a paid source by the FBI. He was a paid FBI informant. In other words, this was an FBI operation. The FBI paid the primary source of the notorious debunked Steele dossier nearly $220,000 between March 2017 and October of 2020 because they dragged this out all through Trump's presidency up until right before the 2020 elections in November of 2020, sorry, uh, up until the November elections going into 2021, technically, but aside from that, to be a confidential human source for the Bureau. Russian business, Russian business analyst Igor Denchenko was worth every penny of it, FBI Special Agent Kevin, Kevin Halson said during the third day of testimony on October 13th. And Denchenko's trial of, on five counts of making false statements to investigators in connection with his role in the anti Donald Trump dossier. Testifying before U.S. East District Court of Virginia Judge Anthony Trenga, Halson said during the 42 month span, information from Danchenko generated 40 intelligence reports and spurred 25 investigations, calling his networks. Uh, calling his network of contacts the best he had seen in the 20, his 20-year 20 career and changing the way the agency runs its Russia counterintelligence programs. The, and it says, when then-Attorney General William Barr, in July 2020, released a redacted transcript of Danchenko's three-day interview with agents in January of 2017, when he allegedly made the false statements, he became a target 
because of the political environment and potentially exposed uh, was ex potentially exposed to Russian operatives, Halson said. Outed and embroiled in high-profile political drama during the summer of 2020, Danchenko could no longer function effectively. The agency closed his confidential human source status, Halson said, meaning he had also lost a significant component of his income. The important part with this is one of the key figures involved with framing this disinformation effort Remember that the Clinton campaign and the Democratic National Committee paid Fusion GPS to go through a medium, Christopher Steele, a former British spy, to talk to Russian assets, information from which he never verified, to provide him the evidence and information, which was all debunked since then, of the whole Trump-Russia scandal. One of the sources in that was Danchenko, and Danchenko, interestingly, was being paid by the FBI. Of course, the payments came afterwards. They brought him out afterwards. And part of that, based on what we're seeing right now, could have been to make it so he could not be investigated, to protect him from investigations and make it so this entire machine they had built could function and run and try to undermine Trump's presidency all through his whole term in office. In addition to this, folks, people were lying about info that got into the dossier as I mentioned, and this was done through Danchenko. Epic Times says this, Clinton associate testifies he lied about claim that made its way into the dossier. In other words, he has now admitted, he has now admitted to lying about information he gave to create that whole Trump-Russia report which was used to undermine an entire presidency and interfere with the U.S. election. If you want to talk about Russian disinformation interfering with an American election, point to the Russian agent hired by the FBI who said on record that he provided Russian disinformation to undermine Trump. Because that's what this shows. It says, longtime associate of the Clinton family admitted under oath on October 13th that he lied when he spoke to a Republican friend about GOP drama. He said, I lied. I got it off cable news. This is another individual, Charles Dolan, the associate who testified during Igor Danchenko's criminal trial in the U.S. Court of Virginia. Dolan provided information to Danchenko, a key source for the anti-Donald Trump dossier that Hillary Clinton helped fund. On October 20th, 2016, it says further in, Dolan mentioned Danchenko, relaying what he portrayed as inside information about the Trump campaign officials, uh, Corey Luden Ludenowski and Paul Manafort. He said, I had a drink with a GOP friend of mine who knows some of the players and got some of what is in this article, which provides even more detail. She also told me that Corey Luden Ludenowski, who hates Manafort and still speaks to Trump, regularly played a role. He is said to be doing a very happy doing a happy dance over it, Dolan said, including a link to a news article. And he said, quote, I think the bottom line is that in addition to the Ukraine revelations, this is before the Russia-Ukraine war, a number of people wanted Manafort gone. It is a very sharp elbows crowd. Dolan admitted on Thursday he fabricated the GOP friend. Mr. Danchenko had brought me some business. I want to tell him that his sources were good. The woman was on cable news, Dolan said on the stand. Ludanowski hating Manafort. Uh, it was pretty common knowledge and all over the news at the time. Dolan's information eventually made its way into the dossier, which included numerous allegations that have since been discredited. This is the story, folks, of how that fake dossier undermined the U.S. presidency, threw the nation into chaos, and was used to rig an election. Tried to rig in 2016. Democrats tried to impeach Trump over while he was still president, and still used as their main narrative going into 2020. That was actual Russian disinformation, paid for by the Democrat Party and the Clinton campaign, and with direct involvement from the FBI and direct involvement from Russian agents being paid by the FBI.